morning. So, as you saw in the preview, we're going to be grinding chamfers that miter into a corner. Uh, you often see these as dual chamfers or compound chamfers. It's a variation of a compound angle, but you approach it a little differently than you would compound angle work. Um, so compound angle work, you have your, your angle and your tilt. And we don't apply the tilt on the angle, we apply the tilt at the base of the angle here, and then we also have to put a little bit of an angle on the wheel. Um, so we'll go over the math and how to inspect it and uh, how to grind it. And um, I'm going to be doing this on the manual grinder. It occurs to me most of my audience doesn't have CNC form grinding. And um, as easy as this would be on the CNC grinder, I think people get a little more of it if we, we do it on the, the manual machine. We'll be able to apply it to their, their doings. So, enjoy. So the first angle of the three we need to build is going to be the nominal angle of the chamfer. If it's a 30 degree chamfer, we're setting 30. If it's 10, it's 10. And so this one's 30, and we have this uh, 15, 30, 45 degree setting block. Instead of gauge blocks or a, a planar gauge, we just use this. It's ground to a precise gauge height. And then we install the clamp system. And this clamp system is really why I recommend Herman Schmidt sign chucks over anything else. It's vastly superior in stability and holding power. So that's taken care of. And we'll also be using this small 3 inch sign bar. So here it is on the grinder. I put a finish part on so you can kind of see the problem we're trying to solve. The horizontal chamfer can be ground in no problem. But that vertical chamfer, we'll have to kick the, the part out on an angle. But we also see that a square wheel won't do the trick. There's a, a, a angled gap between the two because the vertical chamfer is now a compound angle. So we need to figure out how much to rotate the mag chuck away from the rib and then how much of an angle to dress on the wheel to match that compound angle. So here's a quick little trig problem. We take the arc tangent of the cosine of 30 degrees times the tangent of 30 and that 26.565 is the rotation amount for the sine chuck. For the wheel angle, we take the arc tangent of the sine of the arc tangent of the cosine of 30 times the tangent of 30 times the tangent of 30 and that's 14.4775 degrees. On the CNC, we'd punch that right in and dress it. On the manual grinder, we have to use the new bold, which is a degrees, minutes, seconds fixture. Uh, fortunately, most calculators can convert. So 14 degrees, 28 minutes, 39 seconds. We also have an Excel spreadsheet, and I'm just giving you a quick look so you can see the values. Um, I should note that you don't need both angles to be the same. Uh, I have seen that exactly one time in my career, but uh, I, I build the uh, equations to suit that, but it never seems to be a problem. So setting the new bold, we, we work in reverse. We set the seconds and then the minutes to 31 minutes, and then we'll set the degrees to 75. So we're working backwards from 90 for that 14 degree and change angle. And that is our wheel angle. So here it is on the grinder. Gives you a sense of how it works. I'll rough the wheel in first. It's got a lot of stock to come off. So I'll rough it in with a piece of uh, silicon carbide or norbide. Um, and you just feed it in by hand. Fortunately, I forgot to turn on my vacuum extractor, and I got dust everywhere. It's 
my one complaint with the new bold slide is it's a little hard to get a consistent slide feed rate. Uh, something screw driven where you hand crank a screw I think is uh, much much nicer in terms of getting a smooth consistent dress but I make do with this. You can sort of hear how the dress sounds interrupted, a little choppy. As you get closer to being finished, it'll go to a smoother sound. It still sounded choppy there, and so I'm listening for when it sounds like it's cleaned up. And it's still a little rough sounding at the bottom. But when I get close, I'll just feel and see how cleaned up it is. Um, and this is not something you want to do with regular surface grinders with big high grit or low grit wheels. Uh, it's, it's dangerous, but on a tool room grinder with a fine grit wheel, it's not a big deal. But ex exercise extreme caution, I guess. So here is the rotation angle for the sign chuck. I'm just using some setup Joe blocks. And now we have all three of angles ready and uh, we can kind of see how this is all going to work. And this also shows a little better how that vertical wall becomes a compound angle. And we tilt it up to give you an idea what happens. If we have an angle aligned with the x-axis, we just skew the part and grind it. If we have an angle that's standing up, we can use an angle on the side of our wheel to grind it. What we're currently dealing with is a combination of those two problems. So we need to skew the part and have an angle on the wheel. And that's how it all coalesces. and actually grind the angle on. I'll just uh, plunge it down to a little bit above my desired depth. I'll leave one pile finished stock. And this is actually an incredible amount of stock to be removing for something like as simple as a chamfer. But I wanted to show you that it's not a big deal. Um, we're using an 80 grit K wheel, which K is a harder wheel than you'd typically use for surface grinding flat things. But when we're doing form work, we want to retain that angle shape, and we also want to retain the corner. We don't want that corner getting a worn-in radius on it. So a harder wheel will help with that, as well as a tighter grit. Personally, I usually go to 100 or 150 grit, but 80 seemed like a good choice based on the amount of stock coming off. Normally when you see these chamfers in real life, uh, they're very shallow. They're either 5 or 10 degrees, and so the, the amount of stock you're plunging off is minimal. Uh, with these big ones, which I made big for the sake of video so you can see what's happening, um, there's a lot more stock coming off. And so if I actually had to make this part for a customer, I would probably have roughed that prior to heat treat. So all I'm doing is plunging down at a feed rate. It's not even a step per stroke. I just kind of, I have a feed rate monitor on my DRO and so I'm plunging down at 0.2 inches a minute which is about 5 millimeters a minute. Once I'm all the way down I'll feed the wheel backwards into the, the vertical chamfer and uh, once I have that all the way cut in I'll then feed down that remaining one thousandths of stock and then walk the wheel off and that'll give me a nice smooth floor finish. So you can see we've plunged the floor but there's still stock left to remove so now we're going to start feeding the wheel back for the vertical wall. 
What's interesting is just that tiny little 14 degree angle, which is pretty steep, makes the wheel behave completely different. It's no longer side wheel style grinding uh, because it doesn't leave that cross hatch like a Blanchard grinder anymore. Now it behaves like the bottom of a surface grinding wheel normally does since you just have the one point of that cone making contact instead of the entire flange of the wheel. So it operates a lot cooler and leaves it a lot nicer finish. So in terms of heat, this isn't hot. You can touch it when it's done. It doesn't leave any burn marks, but this isn't ultra precision temperature control either. It's probably lukewarm is how I would describe it. Uh, it's fine for a chamfer, but you wouldn't want to be chasing a tenth with this process. It's just, it's too much material coming off, too much warmth. So now I'm walking off finally, and that gives me my, my finish on the floor. So inspecting, we can, we can do it a couple ways. We'll, we'll start with optical, using a tool maker's microscope to pick up the edge, and then you go over and pick up the transition. This is good because this is how these things are usually dimensioned on the print. It'll be like a 30 degree chamfer by 200 thousandths. And this, whatever the DRO reads, matches how they're dimensioning it. Another option, you could do a roll reading. You place a known diameter roll, you probe it, you do a little math to figure out the theoretical sharp corner of the part, or I guess I should say the rib and uh, sign chuck. And then you come up and you find the top of the part and see how much stock is left on that face. You can also do this offline. These are nice ways of doing it because whatever stock is left is how much you would move the wheel down. Thanks for making it to the end. You might be asking why would a toolmaker need to make this feature on a part? And you see them a lot in stamping die applications where you need to get a thin strip of foil through the die. And you need, anytime the foil encounters a new part, some kind of lead in. If there's a small radius in the corner, say you hard melt the chamfers on, what can happen is as that foil hits the radius, it curves and kind of almost folds over on itself. And that's really problematic. So you want a nice sharp corner there for feeding foil. Uh, you sometimes see them in mold geometry, but mold guys have built their process around the RAM EDM doctrine, and that's how they handle stuff, and it's really a little bit easier than grinding it, I would imagine. Um, and then sometimes when you see them, it's simply a misapplication of the chamfer button in CAD. One point in time, I might have pushed back and said, hey, we don't, we don't need to be cutting these chamfers, but... Uh, I've had to adopt the mantra, it's not ours to ask why, it's ours to build the die. And that's not a lack of care, that's me caring a lot about my own sanity. I don't want to burn out of this trade because I've gotten frustrated about all these design or over-design problems. And instead I celebrate my ability to make their design. And that's just how I kind of get through. Um, and I'm pretty happy in life and in business, so uh, my customers are happy. Seems like everybody's happy, so why push back, I guess. But uh, that's my thoughts on life. Thank you for watching.